Hello fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. I finally found a use for these polystyrene balls for decorations. They had been in my drawer for centuries. Today I will make a quick piece, definitely captivating and once again I bring you some new techniques to speed up the tabletop crafting. We are still in the construction of the dungeon inspired by the video game Diablo. You know I'm a big nostalgic, guys. Life point and mana point markers are certainly nothing new in the world of roleplay games. The ones we will build today are inspired by the Diablo game screen. First you need to stabilize the sphere to make uh, an absolutely perfect cut. I use a piece of XPS foam with perfectly 90 degree angles and uh, using a few pins I fix my polystyrene sphere. Pay attention that the support part of the XPS foam is absolutely flat. As you can see, I carefully remove the heads of the pins before proceeding. Once the first cut has been obtained, the following cuts can be easily done using the Guider Pro or whatever support you usually use. My idea is to create two slightly different markers. The one for life point will be based on a rotating system with an indicator of the points from 0 to 999, therefore with three rotating coded rings. That of mana points, on the other hand, will be based on multiple layers, six to be precise, which will be scaled as uh, my character's magic is used. Both systems will have a central axis. In the case of the encrypted rings, it will serve as a fulcrum of rotation, while for the mana scoreboard, it will serve to stack the slices of my sphere. As for the coded rings, I roughly divide my slices into 10 wedges. In this way, I will have a reference to draw the numbers of the outer surface. If you want to be more creative, instead of drawing numbers, you can glue runes, symbols, etc. Push your imagination, guys. of the rotating rings must be fixed on the lower and upper parts of my sphere, leaving the rings free to rotate. The mana board, on the other hand, will have to serve as a kebab stick, so it is important that it can stack the slices without difficulty. All this is very simple and self-explanatory, so I let the pictures speak for themselves. Before proceeding with the assembly, I covered my pieces with black primer.
for the mana pillar I decided once again to use one of the shifty length pillar templates. I love using these templates guys, it's extremely satisfying to see how precisely you can create such detailed pillars. In this case I leave one of the four sides of my pillars intact. Once we have our column, no one forbids us to shorten it to best suit our needs. I left one side of the pillar flat without cutting the shape of my template. In this way I have a flat surface to add a statue by Zitardes cloned long ago. The effect is really fantastic. Before assembling I gave a coat of primer and then I added a screw to the base to increase the weight and to make it compatible with the magnet system of my tiles. created the life point pillar with the simplest possible method. I already have countless videos on the channel on how to create pillars and brick walls, take a look. In addition to a decorative effect, I inserted a large skull on one of the corners. This will indicate the position of my score on the sphere. It's time to paint and assemble everything. This is an afternoon project, so I really use the basic techniques. Red for the life point and blue for the mana, while for the stone I used a simple grayscale. To give a more even coat of paint I used my airbrush. I colored the bus relief numbers with bronze and assembled everything, fast and effective. Now I just have to bring these beautiful accessories to the game table. Thanks for watching the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, keep supporting me on Patreon and uh, till next time, happy crafting!